Hey guys, Google just released Firebase Studio, which allows you to vibe code your way towards quickly building a full stack AI application completely for free. Basically, Google is now directly competing against other agent-driven development companies like Bolt, Cursor, and Lovable, but they have a huge unfair advantage because Firebase Studio is built on top of Firebase, which means all the applications you're gonna be building are going to be able to easily integrate with Firebase authentication, the database tools, and all of the new AI features that Google is cranking out. And in the rest of today's video, I'm gonna be sharing nine amazing features that I found so far while testing out Firebase Studio so that you can jumpstart your journey when using this tool and start cranking out apps like a pro. So let's go ahead and head over to Firebase Studio spin up a quick application and start diving into all the new amazing features. Oh, and real quick, if you would like help on your AI projects or if you would like to meet like-minded AI developers, I definitely recommend checking out the free school community I've created for you guys called the AI Developer Accelerator. We have over 6,000 members. We have free weekly coaching calls where you get to hop on a call with me and other developers so we keep you cranking and making progress on your AI projects. It's a great time. Definitely recommend checking it out. Link down in the description below. Enough of that. Let's head back to the video. All right, guys. Welcome to Firebase Studio where we're going to vibe code our way toward creating a full stack AI application completely from scratch so that along the way I can showcase the nine amazing features inside of Firebase Studio that you don't want to miss out on. So before we get started on actually going and looking at the features, we first need to go off and create an application so that it will go off and make it for us so we can see all the cool features under the hood. So what we need to do is give it a quick prompt. So I'm going to give it one to where we're basically going to say, hey, please help me make a simple to-do list where it's going to, I'm going to pass in a description and then you're going to use AI to rank that description as easy, medium, or hard task. And then if it's an easy task, you know, please color it green. If it's hard, make it red. And what we're going to do just to help guide the AI, we're going to pass up a super simple drawing that I made to where I passed in earlier or drew earlier where it's like, hey, please replicate this layout right here where we have an input area then you can see each one of the tasks with a different difficulty ranking. Super, super straightforward. So let's go ahead and kick off the prototyping so that we can go ahead and start seeing some of the cool features that Firebase Studio has in store for us. And before, you know, as it's kicking off, I wanna go ahead and say you're about to see the amazing feature number one, which is called the Blueprint app sorry, at blueprint of the application, where before it actually creates the entire application, it puts together a really nice plan for you to say like, is this the direction you wanna go or is it not the direction you wanna go? So there's actually two really cool ways you can edit this, but before we edit it, I just wanna show you exactly what it's doing. So it's outlining the exact plan of, hey, here are the core components that I'm about to go create for you. I'm gonna have a task input area where you can actually write the application of the task that you want to build. You're gonna have a button. So as you click start and create, it's gonna add those to the to-do list An AI ranker to do difficulty. So you can see it's actually listing out all the tasks that it needs to go off and build. And what's awesome is that Firebase Studio allows you to edit this plan before it goes off and generates the entire application for you. And there's two really cool ways to do this. Way one is you can click this pencil up in the top and you can actually come in here and update and tweak different things that you do and don't like about the application. Or you can adjust the way that the main features that are built, you can actually go in here and specify so that the AI better understands what you're looking to do. Or you can come down here and actually pass in more prompts to say, hey, please make these changes. So we're gonna go ahead and pass in an update to say, hey, please update the color scheme to only use a vibrant light blue for the primary color. The website should have a modern look and style. All other colors should be black, gray, and white. Make sure the application is built for dark mode. The only other colors should be red, green, and orange for the task difficulty. All right, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna kick it off and see what it does, which in our case, it should re-update our task plan. Now you can see it actually updated the style guide in a really cool format for us. So you can now see, yep, these are the colors of the different tasks. So it actually outlined, you know, hey, the hard task is gonna be red. The medium task is orange and the easy task green. Super, super cool that it does this and it's actually taking an R our request and turning them into application requirements and everything else is super clean. So this is gonna look beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and click prototype this application and this is where the magic starts to happen. So what it's gonna do next is actually go off and create our entire full stack AI application for us 
create all the different pages, style sheets, test, package installations, everything that we would normally have to do through spinning up and scaffolding all sorts of code manually, it's just gonna go ahead and do it for us. So it feels just like your bolts are lovable, but it's gonna make an entire working application based off that uh, app blueprint that we just created. Now it does take a few seconds to go off and fully build. What it's doing under the hood is repeatedly like build a thing, check for an error, fix error, is it still working? And it just keeps going over and over in a cycle until eventually we get us to a screen like this. So you can see right now we have a nice dark mode like we asked for. It's not quite following some of the commands, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that in a second. So one of the quick things that you need to do before we dive into the rest of the features to get the application to work is you need to auto generate your keys. So you can just click right here and what it'll do is it'll actually go off and auto generate a Gemini API key, which is what's going to allow us to access and interact with those AI features, such as like ranking the difficulty of tasks. So that should be done in just a second, which means now we can go ahead and focus on cool feature number two, which is the click and point feature inside of the editor, where you can specifically call out different components that you want to edit inside the application. So let me show you how to use the select feature to go ahead and start making changes. So in our case, I don't like the way that it is coloring buttons. So I can use the select feature, I can click on a button, and then I can directly interact and start to say what I want to change. So we should say all buttons inside the application should use the primary blue color specified we'll just say blue color and we'll just, we'll make sure it kicks it off from there. So now what it's going to go do is it's going to take in the feedback. It's going to go up, update our primary colors, and it should come back here and start to change our button colors. Now I will go ahead and tell you that the, yeah, so now it's more of a vibrant blue. So yeah, you can see it's starting to work, which is actually really cool. I will say Gemini on a smartness scale, it's not as good as some of the other tools out there, but it is working and you know, you might just have to tweak it a little bit more. So now what I want to do is actually show you feature number three that is insanely cool to use inside of Firebase Studio. So it is called the rollback feature. So here's how it works and how you can actually start to use it on your own code. So we can say, please add a footer to the application that says made with, you know, love uh, from Brandon please like and subscribe. Now what it'll do is it'll go off and actually start to make these changes to our application and it'll take, you know, just a few seconds. It's wild how fast this is, but you're going to see it's going to take a few seconds. And now we can say made with love from Brandon, please like, and subscribe. Now here's where the third feature I was talking about comes into play. You can actually, if you don't like what it did, you can easily restore it. So you just click restore. And then what it'll do is it'll perform a rollback. So it's like that change didn't happen. So I know a lot of developers as they're vibe coding, they're like, oh crap, it all broke. Nothing's happening. Nothing's working anymore. Well, this is a really cool feature that they added in to actually make it super easy for you guys to go back in, actually, you know, adjust and undo any breaking changes. Cool. So now I want to show you amazing feature number four inside of Fire Studio, which is called the annotate button, but I like to call it the scribble button. So what you can do with this one is you click annotate and it brings up a drawing framework that feels just like Excaladraw. So Excaladraw, if you used it to like a nice whiteboarding tool, but what's cool is they've actually brought that to inside of Firebase Studio so that you can start to draw draw on your application. So you can actually come in here and actually like actually start to draw on the application and provide feedback. So what I can do is I just still do want to add back in that, you know, that footer. So, but what I want to do is just, what we'll do is this, we're going to draw like a little bar at the bottom and then we're going to do a, we'll do some text and then this is where I'm supposed to be able to draw it. There we go. Well, I'll just do it this way for you guys, just so you can see it, but we'll just do text right here. And we'll say made with love from Brandon Hancock. And then we'll say like and subscribe. And then what we can do is then we can add a little bar right here above it. And now we can start to add instructions. So we can say, hey, please add a footer like, like the one in the image. Then we can also say, please make the text centered and make sure the footer is sticky to 
the bottom. Now, this might do is it actually might take just a second to make a, a bigger change because if you actually go in here and click on it, whenever it's done processing, what you can actually see is it'll actually show our annotations on the bottom. So you can actually see, oh, this is exactly what you were trying to do. I think it's a little bit hard, the black on black right now, but you can actually go off and see what it did. Now, you will get issues sometimes. Jim and I, I think so many people are trying to use it right now. It just, it kind of runs into a few issues sometimes, but you can see it actually went ahead and created the footer and now it's just taking a second to actually show. So isn't that really cool? Like we drew a footer, we said the words to use. Yes, it didn't 100% do it because it went back to the, the heart instead of love, but all around, that is wild. So what we can work on now is looking at the next feature, which I'm actually gonna have to break out my phone for. So let's go ahead and look at feature number five to make sure everything's working so far, which is called basically the phone preview. So what you can do right now is go ahead and click this top button uh, right here, which is called the link button. And what you can do is actually with your phone, go ahead and take a picture of it. And then what it'll do is in real time, it'll actually allow you to go ahead and see a preview of this website. So, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll have like a something pop up on the screen so you can see mine in real time right now, but it actually shows me the exact same website. So all around, so freaking cool. So now that we are done looking at the high level editor view, what I want to do is dive deep, which I think you developers are gonna love the next four or five features that are inside of Firebase Studio. So let's go ahead and hop over to the code editor and let me show you how to do that real fast. Okay, so to go ahead and hop over to our code editor, what we need to do is hit this top right code button. And what this is going to do is actually switch out of the prototyper view over to the code view that you're gonna see now. If you're using this for the first time, definitely give it a few seconds because what it's going to do is go ahead and speed spin up two additional windows for you. It's going to spin up the web view where you can actually see the website in real time, pop it up right now. And then it's going to go ahead and actually pop up the Gemini coder. So this part is where we have access to the website. We can start talking to AI and we can code all by ourselves at the same time. So this is basically the, you know, all in one feature number six, that's just amazing. So here's, let me just show you why it's so cool. So you can actually talk to this, like you're, imagine you're in cursor, you can actually talk to it to actually update docs. So what you can do is say, please update readme to give more descriptions on Firebase Studio. So what it'll do is it'll go off and do just like we normally do, when using like an app like cursor to where it's gonna go find the file. Once it finds the file, it'll then say like, hmm, it looks like you're trying to make changes to this file. And then you can review the changes. So this is where you can actually go ahead and see what it's gonna do. And then you can just update files. So it's like you have cursor built into the web to make changes, which is just wild that you can do this. Now, just one additional like sub feature of this side-by-side -side code editor that I thought was really cool that you guys would like to see. So what you can do is let's just go ahead and open up our main page. So this is where we're trying to go to source, app, and then we're trying to go to our page.tsx. Well, what's really cool is let me go ahead and move this over here. What's really cool guys is you can actually, once again, like the cursor like esque features is you can actually come in here and at any point you can either do two things. You can right click and say, go ahead and start to use Gemini or what you can do as well is hit the Gemini button in the top right. So this one is you know going to allow you to do anything. So what we're gonna do is say, do anything with selected code. And then now what we're gonna do is say, you know, please add an ultra hard color that is black. Then what it'll do, go off, make changes, just like you're working in cursor, and then it's going to update the code, ask you to approve it, and then from there, everything's gonna be good. So you can see now, review changes, it's gonna say, add in a new difficulty mode. It actually made changes in multiple places. So this is making changes in the AI state first, so we're gonna update that file. Then what it'll do is hopefully it'll come back and start to make changes elsewhere. Now I will say sometimes it is not the most, it is not the most reliable. So, you know, sometimes you just have to hit the control Z a few times and, and go from there. So I will say it is getting there. It's amazing, but it is not 100% reliable like you would expect, but still very powerful. All right, let's go ahead and look at another feature. So what I also thought was really cool is inside of the studio, you also have the option to go ahead and open up a full blown terminal. So what you could do inside of here, so this is like fancy feature number seven that I thought was really cool is if you wanted to, you could fully start developing in here and start adding in other packages. So NPM, I, Axios. So what you could do is start to install packages just like this. 
and it'll go ahead, update your package.json, update your package.log, and it all just works, which is wild that it goes ahead and allows you to have access to a full-blown terminal editor in here. Okay, then the other feature that I did wanna show you guys was going off and actually like tweaking things, which was like the built-in agent fixes. So those kind of got merged together, the actually you know fixing code inline and then fixing code by actually like hovering over it. So those kind of got mixed up. So that was, that was eight. Now, and the last feature I wanted to show you before we go off and deploy is how you can actually edit your models that you're using inside of Gemini so that you can get a much better performance. So this is, I'm gonna remember this real fast. So inside of Gemini, what we did last time, it didn't work. So what you could do is go off and ask it to use a much better model. So you can say, hey, please use this Gemini 2.5 Pro model. So the smartest one they have. And what you can say is in here, what you can do is it'll say, go get a Gemini key. It'll redirect you over here to your Google AI studio. And all you need to do to get one of these keys is just literally click create an API key. It takes a second and it's gonna show your key right here. It'll take a, quite a few seconds, but it'll do it. Oh, and then when it comes to project, we were in the task ranker project. So we're gonna go ahead and click create an API key. Now this will take a second. And now we have a key. We can go ahead, copy it back, keep that private. You'll paste it in here, save it. Things are good. Now what we can do is say, now we can go ahead and click it now that we're good. Now that we have access, so we can now see that you're doing a much smarter model. So we can say, please do that again it didn't work the first time. So yeah, I just wanna go ahead and show you guys that just because if you do want to work on building beefier tasks, you might want to go ahead and update to one of these smarter models that are inside of Gemini. So these are a little bit smarter and now it's gonna like start interacting with you like a person. So it says, all right, it seems like the difficult color is there. Could you please provide me uh, which file contains the difficulty color and just say, yeah, we are trying to fix the page.tsx to show the new color and then it's going to go off and do its thing so yeah all around i will say that before we go ahead and publish which we're going to do in just a second i will go ahead and say i'm going to give firebase studio a b minus on what it's doing but you can quickly see how this escalates over the next few months to becoming an a plus option so you can see this one actually did it and it properly updated the difficulties so yeah it's it is getting there and sometimes you just have to put a smarter model in so don't don't give up on it just try a smarter model and a lot of people have not shown that option yet and they're just like oh it sucks but no definitely the smarter models do perform a lot better so um yeah so what we're going to do really fast we're going to go ahead we'll just leave those out for now and what we'll do we're going to go ahead and hop back and start to publish it so let's go ahead and publish and i'm just going to walk you through this really fast so if this is your first time publishing you know this is just like a final thing we've already shown all the cool features what you'll do is you'll click create rollout now if this is the first time you're creating a rollout it's going to ask you to go ahead and pick which payment plan you want to use. So, you know, it's like a pay as you go option, but it's pretty much zero, it is $0. So yeah, and it says it'll take 10 minutes to go off and create a new rollout. And it is not lying. It actually takes 10 minutes to go off and create a rollout. But once you do this, you'll actually have a full blown website that you can go ahead and go over to like taskranker.com and you'll actually be able to access it anywhere you want. Like you've actually built a full stack AI application. And to save you guys some time, I went ahead and actually waited. So now it's fully deployed. So you can go ahead and visit your application so we're gonna go ahead and actually give it a task so we can see it in action so we're gonna say take out the trash and then we can go ahead and say create and then now it's gonna go off and actually make that task and rate it as an easy task and now we'll say do our taxes for the year so we're gonna go ahead and create and that one is hard I'd rate that as a hard I hate doing taxes and then finally what we can do is another one of just saying is like launching a rocket into space yeah, so you can see now it's gonna rate it. Yeah, so it's got everything working, life's good. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing, honestly, this combination of us, us building an application, plus seeing nine amazing features of the new Firebase Studio. And that's a wrap for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning all the new amazing features that are inside of Firebase Studio. And if you had any questions at all today, feel free to drop a comment down below. And also just a quick reminder, if you want to join a group of over 6,000 like-minded AI developers, go ahead and check out that free school community I've created for you guys, AI Developer Accelerator. And I cannot wait to see you over on our weekly free coaching calls. But in the meantime, I definitely recommend checking out all the other amazing AI content I have here on my channel. And I definitely recommend checking out whichever videos are popping up right now. Thanks guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.